Hello everyone. Today we're going to be connecting ROS with Unity. Uh, and to clarify, that means we're going to be setting up a topic, publishing data to that topic with ROS, just like you do in any other in any other time you're using with ROS. And then we are going to be going into a Unity scene and creating up an in scene object that subscribes to that topic and gets data from that topic. We'll be doing fake odometry or pose data. Uh, which would really just be integers we're going to be setting manually but once you do that you should be able to apply it to just about anything all the resources I'll be using are linked uh, in, below I'll link uh, you to the video of the guy who set these up which you can then go there and find the links to download them secondly if there's any kind of software that I'm using that you don't have simply go search it up install it. I already have Unity installed, I already have uh, the Ross Bridge web client. If you don't have these things, just look them up and install it. That's going to be outside the scope of this tutorial, uh, but there's already existing tutorials that you can follow and do them. I did them and I'm a very much a new beginner to Ross, so it's not that hard. I promise you can do it. Alright, with that being said, we'll begin. Timestamps to every step will be in the description, so if you need to go back to to a certain part you don't have to watch the whole video again you can just go down to the description and click the timestamp and that should be a lot easier all right here we go all right for step one we are going to be launching the ross bridge web socket and or server and just to make sure that it's working we're going to check it on our rqt graph to make sure we can see it so first we're going to launch uh run this line of code and you see in the upper left if you don't have this installed go ahead and search it up and install it. I'm going to run it right now. The biggest problem you'll have with running this is your IP address. I'm switching networks all the time including being on closed networks so my IP address is always changing. If you ever have a problem with running any of these probably the first place to check is make sure all your IP addresses are matching up. For example how to check that uh, I'm doing this because we're also going to need our IP address is you're going to run hostname dash i there's many other ways to check this is how I'm going to do it the i is case sensitive meaning if you put a lower i you should get 127 which just means it's saying that it's itself that will only work for you if you're only trying to communicate on the very same uh, system but if you're using a VM to run Linux or over two different computers that's not going to work so you want to capital I and there is the IP just you want to use and now we're going to run our graph There we go. And we can see that we can see the Rossbridge web socket. It's not connected to anything, there's no lines, but we know that it's there. Okay, now for our second step, we're going to start setting up the Unity environment. If you haven't already installed Unity, then go to this GitHub page. Again, link in the description to the original uh, video I found this at. You can follow that link there to go to this page. You can also just type in the URL. Download everything here. I'm not going to because I've already done it, and it's just like downloading every other thing in GitHub download it, unzip it, take the folder, and then drag it into your Unity project. If I want to bring up Unity right here, uh, ignore some of this extra stuff. This is stuff I've just created. You'll Once you drag the folder in, it should automatically install and put everything where it needs to be. You'll see something like raw sharp and scenes. Uh, those are folders of extra scenes and extra scripts that the whole GitHub page has. Lots of those are useful. You can explore them later. For now, we'll just set up the basic one. Go ahead and create a new empty game object in your hierarchy. I'm going to rename it to Ross Connector. Ross Connector. Go over and expect it the inspector. We're going to be adding two scripts to this. Add component. Po we're going to be first adding the ROS connector. Uh, and th this will be telling it where to look on, you know, on the network. Second, we're going to be adding the pose stamp subscriber. We're going to be getting pose data. We're going to set up a topic in ROS and we're going to subscribe to it using Unity. Okay. For our third step, it would be very simple. We're going to rewrite what's in this Rushbed server URL. It'll come with something already written. Delete that. And you're going to put in WS colon two dashes, just like you see here. Or slashes, excuse me. And then you're going to put in your URL. Sorry, your, your IP. And then colon, and then 9090 being the port numbers. Make sure you put in 9090. 
uh, that's the port it's going to go through. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about that. That's kind of outside the scope of this, but just put in your just put in ws colon to forward slashes your IP colon and then 9090. All right, now for our next step, we're going to be editing the Pose stamp subscriber script that we got off of GitHub. If it's far in the future and this script has been updated and these changes have already been made, then don't worry about it. But for now, you will have to make a few changes in order to get this to work. This right here is a finished product, uh, a working script. If you get lost, simply just copy down what you see on my screen. But I'm going to quickly walk you through a few of the changes you'll have, to, all the changes you have to make. First, on line 20, it should say pose stamped or something similar. Make it read just dot pose. Continue that for lines 39, 52, and 60, uh, which are these lines right here. Again, if there's any changes made to the script in the future, these line numbers might not match up. But just simply look for these methods. And if it says pose stamped or anything else, you just want to read pose. Next, we're going to go down to where we're passing in these, where we're setting these messages or the fields for the messages. There should be the key, like it should read something along the lines of message.pose.position. Take out the dot pose and just so it reads what it, you see here. Again, these could be different depending on if the script gets updated in the future, but for now, just make, make the, these seven lines in these two methods read the same as what I have here. Next we're going to go up to process messages and public in a comment out these two lines we don't really need them. Then we are going to go up to the top and we have these two variables position rotation these are the things that we're passing. We're going to want to turn these to public. By default they are private. Turn them to public of course because we're going to be pushing them uh, you know, other scripts are going to be accessing them, so we want to make them public. Also, you can comment out public transform public or publish transform since we're not going to be using that. Great. That should be everything. Uh, again, let me just quickly go through slowly, and so you can see everything in case the script is updated and these settings don't really and these uh, instructions don't really match. Just try to copy down what I have here. Next, we are going to be running our talker script this is if you go to the link in the description it'll bring you to the video where you can then read that description and see how to get the script you can also just make your own uh, but we're going to be running this simply install it you know and just get ready to run it like you'd run any other ROS core script we're going to be running it so I'm going to start and you'll see it's now printing out fake pose data I mean it's essentially real pose data it's just not tied to a robot it just, you know, if you read the script, it's just an integer value that we're incrementing over. If I bring up the graph real quick and I hit refresh, we can now see that we are publishing. N now, for next step that we have our data published, we're now going to put, put it into Unity. So let's go back to our Unity scene and we see post stamp subscriber. We are going to be subscribing to the topic chatter, a little bit an underscore. You can change this to whatever topic you're you know, putting pose data on, if you read the script, that's what the topic was named. If you're doing it from a robot, you might have already pre-named topics that it publishes its data to. If you have a different script, it might be a different topic. Anyways, put in the topic that you want to subscribe to. In this case, it's slash chatter underscore if you download the talker script. Now we are going to hit run. And as you can see, we have our pose in quotation marks data. I'm not incrementing the rotation at all. You know, I just want to see that you can get some kind of oops, some kind of uh, data through. So 48, 36, 24. One quick clarification or warning, I should say. Some of the data will be flipped up. For example, I believe the x, y, z coordinates in Unity are different, or at least orientated differently, than in ROS. Uh, in my projects, I fix this simply by, you know, I get the data and then I just convert them back. But other than that, you're now transferring data from ROS or, you know, from a ROS topic and subscribing to it and subscribing to it in Unity. Go ahead and look at the rest of the scripts for any, there's scripts for, for most of the kinds of data you're going to want to send, uh, send through and they all give you examples uh, if you need to write your own. But yeah, that's essentially it. 
All right, and the very last thing we're going to do is just to show you that it's working and so that you can compare, let's pull up our node graph one last time and hit refresh. And you can see now that we have our talker script publishing on Chatter and that's being subscribed to by Raspberry's WebSocket. We know it's obviously we know it's working because we're getting data, but just so you can see what it looks like on the network or the like node graph, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there you go. Real quick before we finish, I'm just going to iterate over some places you might want to look if you're having problems. Make sure the IP addresses all are all correct. Uh, for and make sure that the master IP for yeah for the computer that's running Unity. Uh, make sure that the other any other computers or you know things that are connected to it know what that is. Make sure that they're all synced up. If you're switching to a different network, you might have a different IP address. That's missed me up before. Make sure you check that. Uh, and but other than that, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, this all works out well for you.